The property um, has been in the Gaskins family for a long time. Uh, part of it goes right back to their lottery days uh, and I've got a deed with a seal and everything that uh, goes back to 1826. So been in the family nearly 200 years. My husband Murray Gaskins uh, was um, a, a, a scientist, um, plant physiologist with a joint responsibilities for University of Florida and uh, Department of Agriculture and he moved up here when he retired and took over management of uh, what was then his father's property in about 1986 and uh, he managed the property, did a lot of uh, clear cutting when his dad died and so a lot of the property is in single age uh, loblolly uh, that I'm trying at the moment to break up so that you've got more diversity on the ground and um, different age structures and uh, wildlife habitats. The property is about 50% planted pines and 50% um, is wetlands in drains and sloughs and uh, cypress ponds and things like that. The planted pines are mostly in loblolly but uh, some of the earlier stands were slash and some of the ones that I've planted since 2013 have uh, been uh, long leaf in places that are well drained and loblolly in places that are, that are wetter. Well, I've been working with Heather a number of years and managing with her is uh, it's a partnership. You're not working for her, you're working with her. And Heather's been involved with every decision being made and asked plenty of questions and and I think we, we probably benefit one another as, as well as anybody possibly could in, as far as managing the property with good results. And first of all, you gotta know what the objectives are and hers are multiple objectives with wildlife, uh, ecosystem improvement, um, invasive species control as well as timber production. She's, she's, uh, she's well known around here for managing and really really uh, Im impressed upon a lot of the neighboring landowners, you know, how to improve their management and do better with what they have. Every, every day is a learning experience and, you know, she, she uh, you know, she watches and asks lots of questions and it's really a privilege to me, you know, to answer the questions because we learn together and it's, uh, it's, it's more enjoyable to have a landowner that's actively participating in the management of their property and uh, she's been so interested in uh, the management on her property. She actually went back to forestry school and got her four year degree, just like I have, and in, in addition to all her other degrees. So that, that, that shows a lot of how, how much her interest is. My husband uh, wanted to ha create a nature center and I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to do that when I was left by myself. And um, finally, I, I sort of, it grew piece by piece. Murray's grandfather did a lot of cattle raising, but before that, there was a lot of um, turpentine and uh, naval stores uh, industry. So in the um, Ed Center, I have some of the old original tables that go back to the commissary days. And I've got a 14 foot long heart pine table that was used to spread out all the fabrics um, and so on. And so I've got a lot of things that had been just in storage with the education centre. I've been able to bring them out and have them appreciated, uh, the historical value of them appreciated uh, by all the visitors who come to the Ed Centre. The Ed Centre has um, an air-conditioned barn, a pole barn, a, an old cookhouse. It has a log cabin uh, next to a big pond and um, an old cow barn as well that I'm using for um, old agricultural implements including going back, way back to mule drawn implements. In terms of the resources, I've started out with an arboretum, thinking about using it for FFA, 4-H, university students to be able to practice tree identification and I've developed into um, a pollinator garden, a bog garden, um, a fernery and 
several different places where I'm diff doing different kinds of ground cover restoration. And all of these are to have a lot of teaching resources close to the Ed Centre in one place so that they're very uh, versatile for different presenters doing environmental education programs. In 2009, Ms. Heather was, was enrolled in our conservation easement program. So every year, we, did, we had the pleasure of, of monitoring the sites on an annual basis. The conservation easement program is a program that we hold easements for landowners. These are easements, perpetuity easements, so we hold them forever and ever. The purpose is, is to provide working lands from, from now to, to forever. Uh, we want to see working forest, we want to see people managing their, the timber, we want to see prescribed burning. And Miss Heather is a great example of the collaboration between a, a private landowner and a government agency. To me, they, it's really important and to conserve our natural places. Uh, we need to have public support for the management practices that uh, will sustain these uh, natural communities. If we can increase the timber production off the land we have, we're less likely to want to clear cut uh, our native communities to provide more land for timber production. And if we manage them right, we can manage the understory so that we have, um, with prescribed fire and so on, so that we have um, a better habitat both for your animal wildlife and for your pollinators. I am absolutely thrilled um, to be selected for this award. It means a great deal to me. I've put a lot of time and effort and love and um, my life values in terms of environmental education and good stewardship of forests. Um, this award will help me to promote what I do with the Education Centre and do in my outreach in um, environmental education. On behalf of the Georgia Tree Farm Program, I'd like to present the 2022 Tree Farm of the Year. Well, thank you very much. I really am honoured to receive it. <laughs>